in just a few moments. How you doing, Ed? Now, <clears throat> a question we asked before the show is, do you create your own Luminar looks? Uh, throw that into the chat box. Well, hello and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, this virtual coffee shop is designed for you to ask a bunch of questions and then for us to, to give you the answers. And the, the questions will range from how to edit images to what's the best um, techniques in photographing uh, portraits or landscapes. So everything about photography is on the table. So. Hello, Russell. And I'm going to get Ed and Russell and a few of you. Um, I'm going to have you come on as some of our guests so it's easier to talk to a live person. You'll be monitoring the comments and then you can ask tons of questions. All right? Well, let's get started. One moment. My NDI decided to shut down. Exit. And let's see if this will work. Yep, there it is. Hello, Rick from UK. All right. All right, so <clears throat> our goal today, we're going to talk about how to fix contrast. So how to, how to look at it, how to um, problem solve. And as you know, we've talked about this so many times. Luminar, the goal of Luminar is to be to, um, purpose-centric, not tool-centric. Our goal is to teach you how to solve problems, and you're using these tools to get it accomplished. So that said, let's come up here to the Help menu, and let's click on our User Guide. And I'm going to type in the word contrast. Look at all these tools that helps us with contrast. Off the top, obviously, we do advanced contrast control or tool. Color enhancer. Ooh. I didn't realize it at first, but the dramatic tool, yes, it does. Um, the dramatic tool has tools or um, settings inside of it that deals with contrast. Right. Okay, um, Ed, we'll answer that question in, the, in a few moments. All right, so I'm going to start out first. I'll minimize this. And the first thing I like to do is bring back some of the highlights. And already, notice the contrast on her skin is coming back. So right here, I can see part of it is blown out. So what we want to do is bring that back. And of course, our AI accent. I don't want to go overboard on this yet because I need to repair the image a little bit. Now let's go to the Pro Tools. Here's where we were talking about the advanced contrast. So instead of just adjusting the overall contrast, like I could up in here, the smart, the smart tone for the smart contrast, I could do that here. But that's not what I want to look, what I'm going for. What I'd rather do is break it down to highlights, midtones, and of course the shadows. So here's the highlights. And notice the skin color is slowly coming back. And I can balance it. I'll get right about there. Midtones. Good. And again. I could balance it. And last are shadows. And keep in mind, you don't have to adjust all three. I just want to see what the shadows are doing and see if it's going to add or take away. 
Oh, you know what? I actually like right about here. All right, there we are. So that was our advanced contrast, and that brought, brought it back a bit. Now, let's look at the color enhancer. Now we're going to deal with the color contrast. A little too much. Right about there is good. Look at the brilliance. And we're going to warm up the scene just a touch. There we go. And again, just click on the toggle, toggle on and off to see <clears throat> what the effect is doing or what the tool has, the effect the tool is having on the actual image. Come back up to the advance and tweak it just a touch. There it is. So before and after, with, with, with just a few of the selected tools, we're able to bring back or take control over some of that uh, contrast that we lost. So what causes us to lose contrast? In a situation like this, <clears throat> we want the, the dark pixel and the bright pixel next to each other. That's going to give us our contrast. If I blow out the shot, if I take a picture and I overexpose it, I just lost contrast, contrast in the scene. So it's better to underexpose by like a half a stop. So this way, if you have to, inside software programs like this, you can bring back some of that contrast. <clears throat> but the moment you blow out you know, and, and have a zero for the pixel count, um, you have no detail there. There's nothing we can do to bring back that contrast. All right? So that was that one. Now, let me answer... Edward. Edward says, how does Aurora add to Luminar? So Aurora is for HDR. So it's a phenomenal HDR program. Oh, I don't have it here. The, the picture you saw that I did of the cowboy, just for a goof, I wanted to see how it would look with a single image if I could pull out all the HDR in it using Aurora. It came out great, but it's typically used for like landscapes, um, and it's when you want to take the high dynamic range and bring it all together. So that's great. We got that down. Now you can use all the tools inside Luminar to take it a step further. I assumed when I first started working with HDR that the moment I <clears throat> applied the HDR effect, it was going to look perfect. <laughs> it never did. So they told me, no, that's tone mapping. You toned it. Now you have to go back and process the image. So I hope that answers it for you, Ed, is how Aurora and Luminar are together. You use Aurora to tone map, and then you use Luminar to finish it off. All right? Let's go back here. Here's the Scottish Castle again from my good buddy Gary McIntyre. Um, <coughs> again, a shot of a dull not exciting day. Like there's no contrast. Everything seems like it's blending together. So let's see what we can do with it. Yes, the first step is I do want to come into uh, AI Accent and see what that does for me. And already it's working its magic. Because don't forget, it's, it, it's enhancing the colors, the details, the tone and the depth of the image. Um, let's do structure. Ooh, right there alone. Look at that. Look how it's coming in and it's doing a very nice job on separating the castle from the background. Let's go to the Pro Tools. All right, now here we go. Um, let's tackle the highlights first. Good. And you tone them in. That's it. And for the midtones, so the midtones are going to be more into the castle area here in the background. Yep. So let's bring that in and balance it. Good. And let's see what the shadows are going to do. 
So the shadows, I think are going to make it look a little dull. Nope, okay, so let's do this. Let's dial back the shadows. And then for the balance, we'll make it a little richer. There it is. <clears throat> Good. Before and after. And we'll use this one globally. So just this smart contrast, look what it did for us here. Now let's come back to the color enhancer, which has the color contrast in it. Now we don't want to go overboard, because if we do, look how fake the grass looks. I like the water, but not the grass. Let me change the whole view. Ooh, I like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, ooh, that's a different approach. Good. So it's changing the time of day, it seems, that we uh, photograph this. Great. And again, before and after. Yeah, it still looks like I overdid it a bit. So I'm going to dial it back a little. Right there. And I reset it. So you saw I made a mistake and I hit the reset button. We'll come down to the history tools and I'll just undo my reset instead of starting all over again. There it is. All right. And last, we might as well do what Harrington suggests, the 50-70% uh, rule. Dial it back to zero. Cranking up between 50 to 70%. This is going a little bit further. I like it right there. Here's a 100%. So that's the effect everything is doing. Let's dial it back just a little. I like it right there. Great. And so there you have it. So, um, so guys, <clears throat> again, what we're going to do is, if we want to improve the contrast, we figure out which tools can help us get there. But before we do any of that, we want to make sure that when we're actually photographing, like Dave said, you know, we want to expose for the shadows and develop for the highlights. Well, what we want to do here is use the power of the, um, of the user guide. And again, just type in contrast. Do you ever notice your spelling goes out the window when you're with a live audience? <laughs> Good. Let's see. Um, oh, the dramatic tool. Let's, let's check that out in a moment. And of course, your LUTs could help out. And that's, you know what? You know, let's, let's try that on this image here. We'll come down to Creative Tools, Dramatic, and there it is. Local Contrast. Apply a little amount. Make sure we don't saturate too much of the colors. And let's see what the Local Contrast is doing. Ooh, look at that. Especially, wow, especially in the building. You know what's interesting? <laughs> out, of, out of all the times I've edited this image, I never noticed the power lines behind it. Look at this. So that's interesting. Um, and again, because it was dull and flat, you didn't notice it, and now you do. Awesome. All right, so Tom asked, will there be a plugin for Aurora to go from Luminar to Aurora? Um, Hmm, how can I answer this? Put that as one of the feature requests, all right? And you'll be happy with the results that will be coming out soon. Well, not soon, but you'll be happy with some of the results 
where we love Aurora, and I love all the features Aurora does, you can go from Aurora into Luminar, which makes sense, and then back into Aurora. Um, but to get it to do the tone mapping inside Luminar, well, that's what Aurora is for. So as it stands right now, that's the purpose of Aurora. Here's the purpose of Luminar. You can go from Aurora to Luminar, make all your changes, and bring it back again. All right? I hope that answered it. Great, guys. And Tom from Wisconsin. So, so guys, um, once again, do, do me a favor. Please, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And if you like this, leave a comment below. Share it with your family and friends. If there's a notification bell, click on that. And that'll get you notified when we're about to go live. Any questions you have, please drop them in that box. And then we'll apply it to the next um, coffee break. If you want to be a guest on the show, just send me a message to Vanelli at Skylum.com. Vanelli at Skylum.com. And just, hey, Vanelli, I'd love to be on. Even if we just sat back like this, and, and add, um, you have like four or five questions you want to ask, and we'll answer the questions live. So this will benefit everybody else. Oh, and of course, benefit you. So, guys, thank you so much for, for joining us. We'll see you soon.